wanted to host this webinar with you. As you would have just heard, we've hit the record button on this um, as we're keen to make sure that we capture um, the information that's being shared uh, so that we can um, uh, broadcast it to others who may be interested in this program. We will be sharing this recording as well as the slides um, with participants and other interested parties. So no need to take copious notes if all you're after is the content that's on the slides. Um, before I also formally launch into proceedings, can I um, acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land uh, on which we all are gathered. Um, and today, for me, that's the Gadigal of the Aura Nation. And I want to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. So um, let me walk you through the agenda of today's webinar. And I might just get my colleague Elijah to click to the next slide. Um, so we would like to offer a short introduction to who we are as studying New South Wales for those of you who aren't aware of our work. Um, before launching into a, a deep dive around the International Student Awards, um, what the program entails and how you can participate. And that, that section of the discussion will be led by my colleague, Elijah Frost, um, who will be jumping online after I deliver these opening remarks. Next slide, thanks, Elijah. So um, in a nutshell, for those of you who aren't aware of Study New South Wales, um, we are a small agency that was set up back in 2014 with a view to support the growth of um, this wonderful international education sector that we all belong to. We know that it's a, a significant um, revenue earner for the state, but more importantly, we believe that the contribution our international students make to our communities um, is a significant one. Um, we love the cultural heritage they bring, uh, the skills that they bring, uh, and the talents uh, and in the way they enrich our communities. And so that's why uh, we are here, is to help grow this sector, grow the number of international students um, in New South Wales, and all the benefits that they bring, and seek to do so in a way that is sustainable going into the future. We really want to position New South Wales as a leading destination for not only education, but as well a range of other areas, including innovation, employment, um, and of course, uh, for, for skills and training. We, are, uh, uh, we have four core functions um, that we seek to deliver on, the most important of which is looking to improve the experience of international students right across the state. We are, of course, focused on the promotion um, of New South Wales as an education destination. Um, we serve as a front door to coordinate policy and advocacy for international education in New South Wales, and um, are also focused on supporting the edtech sector um, in New South Wales. So four key functions that we're looking to deliver through this team. Now we have uh, on the back of consultations with industry last year released um, what we have dubbed the New South Wales International Education um, Recovery Strategy. Uh, to really highlight some of the key areas of activity we need to deliver on in the short to medium term to help regrow the pipeline of international students to the state um, following border closures that we've experienced over the last couple of years. And based on these consultations, um, we've articulated four main pillars of activity which build on those core functions that I discussed. You'll be familiar um, with the work that we have done to support the return of international students and um, celebrations involved last December when uh, we welcomed that, uh, those cohorts of students um, on special flights uh, before the borders reopened and what a celebration that was. Um, and we'll continue to support those student returns with clear information on our channels about um, uh, supporting uh, information uh, needs for students as they travel back to New South Wales. The other important pillar of work that we're delivering at the moment is doubling down on our promotion and marketing efforts. So for us, uh, we really need to get the message out there that um, our borders are reopened and New South Wales very much welcomes um, our international students. And we're looking at doing this um, through the setting up of new offshore education counselor positions in emerging markets like um, uh, ASEAN and Latin America, as well as a new position that we're opening in India, in Mumbai. 
um, with a view to supporting, as I say, growth from those emerging markets. But we also have a team in China looking at how we can continue to support um, student returns and student engagement in the critical market that is China. Um, student experience remains absolutely critical to what we do. We want to make sure that the postcard um, matches the experience and uh, our current students um, make the most of their time in New South Wales. So we run a lot of onshore programs to help um, students look after their welfare, their safety, their well-being, as well as helping them to connect up to, to employment opportunities. And, and for us, that's about making sure that we have satisfied customers who, who can support those peer-to-peer -peer referrals. The last pillar um, is a bit of a catch-all and really refers to ecosystem development. So we know that the overall health of our international education sector relies on having a healthy pathways um, to study here in New South Wales, um, and also in terms of uncovering those commercial opportunities that exist offshore. We've seen um, now with COVID um, and the importance that transnational education holds, and we're looking to use our new and growing resources overseas to help this sector capitalize on those opportunities overseas. We're also very focused on building those links with industry and supporting student employability. As we know, there is a dearth um, of skills and talent, um, not only in Australia, but right around the world. And that competition for talent is great. And we want to engage with industry to help support those pathways to employment for our international students. Finally, as I say, we work with the edtech sector in helping to ensure that we not only grow um, our edtech companies, which are very concentrated on the eastern seaboard and particularly here in New South Wales, but as well helping to ensure that the education delivery in New South Wales is at the cutting edge of innovation, helping to support that student experience. So edtech plays a critical role there. So in a nutshell, that's what we're doing. Um, we'll be focused on in the medium to short term and the government is injecting about $20 million over four years um, to support those pillars of work. A quick um, nod to the team uh, who make this magic happen. So you've got us all there um, on the slide. Please don't ever he hesitate to reach out to connect with us. We're all about supporting the sector and doing what we can to help the recovery um, and to support um, our international students right across the state. So a uh, big nod and thanks to the team um, who do so much work with the sector um, to help support uh, our international students. So I might leave um, my part of the discussion there. I'll, I'm happy to take a few questions if you want to drop them into the chat about um, the work that we do. I'll also excuse myself um, as I have another engagement I have to attend to, but we'll now um, hand over to my colleague Elijah Frost, who is running this International Student Awards program for us this year, and we'll tell you a little bit more about how you can be involved and, and what the program is all about. So thank you very much for joining us, and Elijah, I'll pass the baton to you. Well, thank you, Toshi, and uh, and good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, it's it's great to have you joining us for this uh, for this information session um, on on what is really one of one of our our, our flagship events here at Study, and, and certainly one of the highlights of the uh, of the international education um, calendar in, in in New South Wales. Um, maybe some of you have joined us before um, at, at previous awards ceremonies uh, we've had in in recent years. Um, whether that's uh, whether that's in person or, or, or whether you've dialed into uh, uh, to our live stream uh, international student awards ceremony um, last year, if that's you, um, you'll you'll know what I'm I'm talking about. It's a really um, uh, it's a really great opportunity for us to gather as a sector and celebrate the the achievements not only of our students um, in 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 their uh, in their contribution to their uh, to their to their community. Um, and, uh, and, and to the lives of, of their peers, but also the fantastic work uh, that our providers themselves are engaged in, uh, along with, uh, with the various uh, businesses and community groups that have a focus on international education. So uh, this afternoon is really all about giving you uh, an overview of the, of the awards and, and, and how, they're, how they're structured um, and, some, um, and some information about how to how to engage with the process, how to, how to make your nomination, how to craft your nomination, um, what, uh, what, what to include and, and what to be mindful of uh, in, in doing so. Um, we've, got, we've, got two, we've got two categories, we've got two genres uh, of award um, that we're looking at celebrating as, as part of the, uh, the ceremony. So, so the first is, is, of course, the International Student of the Year Award, uh, and the second goes into uh, 
uh, international student community engagement where we celebrate our, our providers and our uh, and our organizations now i'll uh I'll continue on here um here's how you might think about the way in which you engage uh with the award so so obviously you're here looking for some uh, for some information about how to make your nomination um but here's really a, a, a little breakdown of the benefits that you're unlocking by doing so so firstly you know, and obviously we're looking at recognizing uh, the achievements of our students. You know, those of us in in, uh, in international education know when, and, and come from from that place. It is indeed uh, all about the students and the uh, and the achievements um, and the experiences that they that they have here. This is also a great opportunity, um, not only for for those institutions and providers who are, who are nominated, but those who, uh, of course, nominate students. Um, to uh, to have your institution or organisation, uh, I suppose, promoted or profiled um, as part of the uh, as part of the awards. It's a it's a fantastic opportunity for for, for visibility, uh, and it's a it's a really good opportunity to have you know some of your particular projects or initiatives um, uh, be given a uh, be given a, a profile um, on the uh, on the afternoon. You know, and of course, you know, here at Study New South Wales, we're all about opportunities to bring the sector together. Um, so, uh, so, so please, uh, please do do view the, uh, the the awards later this year as an opportunity to to perhaps reconnect with those uh, across the sector who you uh, who you haven't had the chance to uh, to connect with this year as of yet, um, and to uh, and to get excited together about um, about the things to come. Now, as you can see, we are right in the middle of the uh, of, of of the nomination period. So, uh, so nominations. Are now open, um, as uh, as as you may have been aware, and you've got until July uh, to put your uh, to put your nomination together until the first of July, after which we announce uh, our finalists in September, uh, in the lead up, of course, to the ceremony to be held in uh, in October. And of course, I know you'll be you'll be watching this space in that regard. So it's really good that you've logged in and, and joined us today. Um, we're, we're at we're at early early May, and so you've you've still got um, you've still got quite a comfortable amount of time um, to start to, to to gather evidence to start to think about uh, those students or projects or, or organisations that you want to to nominate and to get cracking on the um, on the nomination process. And of course, you know, reaching out to us along the way if there's anything that we could be helpful with. So what I'll do is I'll really quickly talk you through the, the, the categories of awards, uh, both for the International Student of the Year Award and for the Community Engagement category, uh, and then provide you with some, some tips on how to lodge a good nomination. And then, uh, and then by the end of the session, we'll have a, a comfortable amount of time for any, for any questions uh, or comments you might have. So in terms of eligibility criteria for the International Student of the Year Award, Right. So it's it's really it's really down to the institution itself um, to be nominating. Um, one thing we'd, we, we'd like to make clear, we actually don't accept self nominations in this category. Um, and a question that we often get, which we uh, uh, which we unfortunately don't uh, accept either, are, are pair or group nominations. So we're really looking for um that that individual nomination to be to be made by the the institution and look i've 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 been there i i, I understand that the, the temptation to uh to to want a, a, a pair or a number of students or a group to to receive recognition um but the uh, the criteria really does um go down to the uh, go down to the individual um keep in mind you need to have the uh, the agreement of the student prior to making the nomination so um so uh, the, the the temptation uh, again to, uh, to to make this nomination, if you like, by surprise, um, is is understandable. But but in this case, we do um, we do expect that the student to be uh, to be aware of and, and on board with the nomination. And then, of course, um, the, the 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 student uh, who who you nominate must indeed be an international student uh, on a, on a valid visa. Now, down to um, down to the the recommendation of two referees. Um, it's it's a it's it's quite an important component of your nomination to be thoughtful about the referees. We really, and we'll go into this a little bit later on, but we we really encourage you to um, to choose referees who will be able to 
in quite specific and substantive terms attest to the achievements and the merits of the of the nominee and we and we do ask for for two of those and here's what we're looking for uh, in our nominees um, here's the uh, here's the the selection criteria so we really want to see how your nominee has added value to the community right so that's through uh, participation in community initiatives right participation in in community initiatives that that really um that really yields an impact on on the lives of others, right? And you know, um, if if you haven't already, I do encourage you to be on our on our website, um, where you can see past uh, past nominees and, and past winners, um, and and the the type of work that they've done in their community. So you know, um, are are the students integral in you know connecting a, a, an ethnic group or a language uh, community group um, within the um, Within the broader New South Wales community, are they, uh, you know, are they bringing various unconnected parts of the community uh, together around a certain initiative uh, or event? And of course, volunteer work uh, features pretty uh, pretty regularly in um, uh, in the in the nominations that we uh, that we received, right? And uh, and and ideally, uh, not not um, uh, not only, but ideally, um, a, a recent achievement or contribution. Uh, in in that regard, would be uh, would be viewed favourably. Uh, um, again, I'll I'll I'll, I'll um I'll, I'll remind you that I'll that I'll take questions on on these um uh, on on this content a little bit later on as well. Now, the second category of the of the awards is the International Student Community Engagement Award, and here we've got two categories. Uh, so, first of all, business and community, but then uh, a, a discrete category for education providers as well. So here we're looking for an initiative or a program, uh, as of, as opposed, of course, to, uh, to to an individual, right? And we're looking for a specific period of impact um, as regards those programs or initiatives. So it really should be uh, should be from June last year um, that the uh, that the program has shown the particular impact. Although, of course, you know we we, we don't need the um, uh, the, the 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 lifespan of the program to be within that envelope. It's just um, it's just a matter of demonstrating the impact across that period. And so, of course, this could be for a you know for a long-standing program at, at your uh, your organisation or institution. Um, we do need the endorsement um, of the uh, of the head of the organisation or or a key administrator in the organisation uh, who runs the the program uh, or, or, or initiative. Um, so, so again, that goes to um, uh, that goes to the requirement for a written statement that that has uh, that that has an element of of substantive discussion of the of the benefits of the uh, of the program. Uh, and lastly, we're looking for the impacts or evidence of the impacts uh, on international students themselves. So, uh, so we're after those uh, those those statements from at least two international students who are beneficiaries. Uh, of the uh, of the program, and uh, and and again, please do um, in 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 um, uh, in collating those statements from students. Please do try to ensure that they're specific, that they actually go to the benefits or the or the impact uh, of the program that you're um, that you're submitting for 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 nomination. Um, and of course, we'll be we'll be looking for. Uh, we'll be looking across all of the the, the various evidence types that you provide uh, for those uh, benefits to the students uh, and the wider community. Now, interestingly, um, we're, we're looking at programs that are addressing identified needs. Right? So they, they they must be addressing a, a need that is um, that is that is known and evident in the international education uh, community. All right, so I'll continue on here. And we've look, we've got some, I will pause on these for just a moment, reminding you, of course, that we will um, distribute these slides a little bit later on for, uh, for, for you to have a look at. But what what is the what is the what is the manner of of, of impact that the uh, that the program is showing? So is it creating new connections? All right, is it connecting uh, international students with uh, with the life of the of the broader community? 
right? Is it something that others in the sector um, could uh, could could pick up, adapt, uh, and, and run with uh, in their own uh, in their own context? And how is it helping to break down barriers uh, for international students? Whether that is uh, uh, whether that is uh, barriers to, to to community participation. Uh, barriers to, uh, to, to to employability and, and access to uh, uh, to jobs or, or internship opportunities. Um, how is it? Uh, how is it uh, making things uh, uh, ma making those connection points stronger between international students and um, uh, and the New South Wales community? Now, in this case, um, for uh, for this particular award, uh, self nominations are acceptable. Right? So uh, so it's quite. It's quite all right and uh, and expected that um, uh, that uh, that you would nominate your 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 organisation for for this particular award. Okay, so I suppose this is a little bit of a a little bit of a summary um, of of some of the um, the key considerations that you should be making in in putting together your nomination. Um, so first of all, it needs to it needs to really clearly outline. Um, the the uniqueness of of the of either the candidate or, or the program and its distinct impact um, quite clearly measured um, and, uh, and and articulated um, now of course we're looking for these nominations to be uh, to be presented in in quite a concise um, way um, so you know as as is the case with that uh, with with many um, uh, with 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 many processes of of this type. Um, more doesn't necessarily equal better um, in terms of the the word count of your nomination. Um, it, it's really about the the, the benefits and, and the impact of the program, um, or the uniqueness of the individual's uh, contribution. Um, and I've touched on this a couple of times, but um, but really do really do look to make those referee reports um, count. Um, uh, do do try and um, ensure that they're, they're actually quite substantive uh, in terms of their description uh, of of the achievements either of the uh, of the the student who's being nominated uh, or the organisation who's being uh, who's being nominated. So uh, look at, at this point. Um, happy to uh, happy to um, take any any questions. If there's anything that could uh, that could benefit from a bit more um, bit more explanation, then, then happy to. Um, Happy to take those now. Okay, let's just take a look here. It does look like we've got a uh, we've I've got a I've got a hand raised on um, uh, on on an iPhone. Hello, can you hear Hi me there. now? Yeah, I've got you. Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Herbendra. So I had a question about community group and a business. It should be registered or it should have a personal IBM about the community group because most of the community group are not yet registered and don't have their own ABN or ACN. So in that, if you have to say something. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, we'd be we'd be happy to um we'd be happy to sort of advise on 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 the on on the, the the requirements there i mean depending depending on the community group i mean as you as you quite rightly point out i mean community groups are, are a pretty um you know there's there's a bit of of diversity in terms of the level of i suppose formality and and, and registration within a within a community group um mm -hmm. so uh so look um if if it's a if it's a, an organization or, or an association um then any any um any any evidence you can provide in terms of the of the the, the formality the the sort of how long it's been established for um, would be uh, would be something that we can we can consider. Oh, okay, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah. So it's actually don't have to be registered or having ABN, just the uh, evidence of existence and what they have done, or a kind of report that may reflect its existence. Yeah, absolutely. And look again, again, depending on um, depending on the on the on the type of organisation and whether it exists under the auspices of a particular business or or, or a provider, um, we can we can work with you on that. But um, but happy to 
Happy to talk about your particular case off, off, offline if you've got some more questions about your own nomination. Uh, may I have your email address if I have to contact you after this session? Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll provide that at the end of the session. Oh, okay, that sounds good. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for the question. Okay, now we've got a uh, we've got a question in the chat, uh, which I'll just access. Uh, we will be able to use images uh, as part of the application. Uh, Herman asks, "Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, please, please do look if you've got um, if you've if you've got images that that will uh, that will strengthen your application and, and give us a, a bit of a sense of of what of what." Has happened of you know and, and the impact of the the initiative or, or the work of a particular individual, um, then yeah, please please go ahead and, uh, and include those as part of your application. Okay, I'll I'll continue to um, uh, to work my way through the questions. Okay, that looks to be uh, to be all that we have for uh, for the minute. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll I'll proceed to, to to wrapping this one up for you. Um, but look, just to um, just just to reiterate a, a couple of uh, a couple of key points um, here. So, so first of all, um, the, the the more the more detail you can uh, include that goes to the impact and the uniqueness um, of uh, of of your program or initiative, or, or alternatively of the uh, of the the contribution of of the the, the student nominated. Um, the better, um, and uh, and at this stage, it's a matter of really working with the referees as well to to, to get some um, uh, to get some substantive kind of supporting uh, comments to support your nomination as well. Um, mm -hmm. I think someone might have a question. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. I just have one question in reference to the ceremony. Is that will that potentially be online or will it be? I guess it would be in light with COVID with certain situation, but will it be face to face in November, December? What's the plan? Yeah, absolutely. Good, uh, good, good question. We're certainly working towards having a, an in person ceremony. Oh, fantastic! Uh, this year, um, but that is that is that is not to say we'll be uh, we'll, oh. we'll, we'll be uh, walking away from, uh, yeah. from you know allowing others to access it online as well. Yeah. Um, and the timing is around November. Just I'm um, because some students will be traveling back home in around December. Just so November, like rough dates, maybe around November. Is that right? Uh, around around late October. October. Oh, that's early. Wow. Okay. Fantastic. Awesome. Yeah. More details to follow as well, of course. Thank you. No worries. Okay. Well, if there are no further questions, I'm going to thank each and every one of you for uh, for dialing in today uh, and, uh, and and being part of this session. I I, I trust it's been helpful, um, uh, even if it's uh, even if it's just the start of the conversation and, uh, and and a bit of a prompt for for further questions. Then uh, then good o, um, you, uh, you you know where we are and uh, and how to contact us. Uh, and uh, we'll be we'll be happy to work with you on this between now and the uh, and, and the closing date for nominations. Uh, but for now, keep an eye out for uh, for the, the the presentation slides. And, uh, and thanks again for uh, for listening in, everybody. Take care. Thanks a lot.